In this video I just wanted to go over quickly a couple of the updates as far as calibration goes for the new software version that I just released, uh, version 1.4. Um, the first thing that I wanted to go over was the, uh, the Arduino sketch. So I've moved uh, most of the motor direction calibrations into the software so you really shouldn't have to come in here into the Arduino sketch and adjust much but I'll just uh, point out a couple things. Um, I went ahead and left uh, motor directions uh, here in the sketch so that you can change them here and in the software. Uh, I guess the reason I left them in both places is that um, so if you have drivers that want to drive your motors in different directions you can still change the motor directions here and leave your software settings at default uh, but I found different drivers want to spin the motors in different directions for example the uh, DM542 motors uh, spin the uh, the motors in a clockwise direction whereas the uh, DM320T that I'm using for J4 it wants to spin the motor the opposite way so you can see here the default setting in the Arduino I went and buff that a zero so that all of the DM542 drivers are a one and the DM320 is a zero um, track direction uh, its direction is only here in the Arduino software and it is a zero and then the other thing is I've made some improvements to the control algorithm um, so uh, to try and speed up the robot a little bit and try and optimize the speed so I've changed the uh, uh, robot speed multiplier to 200 so that's here um, so if you want to slow your robot down you would raise this value essentially increasing the time between steps so that that's pretty much all I had for these for the sketch but you shouldn't really have to mess with that too much um, as far as the software goes if we go to the calibration tab you can see down here I've got these two uh, these two values so right here calibration directions and it says default is 001100 and motor direction outputs default 000101 so these um, values it's a six digit number and each digit represents uh, axis one through six so um, this would be axis 1 is a 0, axis 2 is a 0, axis 3 is a 0, axis 4 uh, is a 1, axis zero is, uh, axis 5 is a 0, and axis 6 is a 1. So this motor direction, the way that I've got my robot configured, um, this controls which way the motor is going to turn. So if you've built your own custom robot, and let's say that you've put this motor on this side, and you need it to spin the opposite direction, you could come in here, for example, and make that 0 a 1 and that will reverse the rotation of the motor. Now up here calibration directions this um, controls which side of the limit switch um, or which side of the axis the limit switch is located so which direction the motor is going to turn to calibrate so if you've built your own robot for example um, my limit switch for J2 is right down here um, so J2 is going to roll backward onto that switch. Well, if you built your robot differently, and let's say you put your switch out here on the front so that it, the axis 2 had to come forward to hit its full uh, limit, you would come in here and change that 0 to a 1. Um, and that would change the direction that it's going to drive that axis to try and calibrate. So it um, fixes a couple bugs that I had in the first version and gives you the ability um, to completely configure which side of the axis your limit switches are on and uh, which direction the motors turn. Um, one of the other things um, I added is the travel track. You can see here on the main control screen we've got the travel track so um, you know you can See, I'm jogging the, the travel track there. It's a little bit noisier than the other joints. Um, so to calibrate the track, I did not add a limit switch to the travel track uh, yet. Maybe in a future version I might do that, but right now I'm using an Ethernet wire to grab the six limit switches off the robot, and I only have eight wires on an Ethernet, so for now um, I figured the travel track is easy enough to manually calibrate. Um, so what I do to do that is I basically just unplug the motor for the travel track and then I can manually 
just manually rotate the uh, track to its limit so that it's it's all the way uh, physically up against its hard stop there and then I can hit calibrate track to zero and we come in here in the main control screen and my track is now at zero and then I can plug this back in so that's how the track is calibrated it's it's pretty simple just a manual operation um, I've also in this version I've added functionality that when it calibrates it's going to go to its calibrate position like it did before um, but one of uh, uh, somebody who's built this robot who I've been working with um, ha had some suggestions that I make it come off the limit switches and slowly come back onto them. I thought that was a great idea so I incorporated that. So now if I hit auto calibrate the robot will go to its calibrate position. Let's give it a second here. And it's going to hit each limit switch and then it's going to come off of each switch a little bit and then slowly come back onto them so it's more consistent the speed that it comes onto the switches and the distance it travels is more consistent so we get a, a little bit more consistent um, calibration there okay um, and then also in the calibration I had some requests to add a uh, calibrate for specific joints only so if you wanted to uh, calibrate only a specific joint you could do that so for example if I wanted to only calibrate joint 2 it's going to do the same procedure but only for joint 2 so that makes troubleshooting a little bit easier alright um, and then the only other thing is here is the, the track calibration. So this works the same way as the other joints as I went over previously in the last video. Uh, in here you just put in the track length. So I measured my track and I can, I can traverse a total distance of 403 millimeters. And then the uh, step limit, it took me 10,100 steps to make that happen. So you can just put in the calibration, calibration values for your track and then hit save calibration. So you could make your track any length you want. Mine's pretty short. Um, given the, you know, I didn't have a lot of room here to work and um, some of those rails can get pretty expensive but you can make it any length you want, you could make it a belt drive if you want doesn't really matter as long as it's got a stepper motor attached to it and you can put in the length and the how many steps it takes to make it move it'll work just fine. Um, everything else is pretty much the same, you've still got the fine calibration um, your DH parameters and all the other uh, calibration values so I think that's pretty much everything as far as calibration goes for this new version. So, alright, thanks for watching.